Okay, um, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation to this um, this wonderful event. So it's very interesting for me to hear all the, the inputs. Um, I will talk about the city and its way from uh, utopian plan, an utopian city, to a kind of this dystopia. And I will talk about this guy, Kenzo Tonga. Entry to a kebab grill above this entry. You can still find this, this uh, picture. Um, and yes, as mentioned, it's, uh, the city is, is Kopje. It's also uh, urban development, a new city, a little bit different than Shalgotarian uh, or Duna Uivaros. Um, but let's start from the beginning. Um, it's a, it's a little bit um, too, too low. Sorry. Mm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Is this <laughs> I'm sorry. Hello, first one. Now it's going to work. Thanks. Um, so let's begin for the uh, first, um, or some of the first, the history of, um, of Skopje. So we are here in a, um, we have the Osman Empire, and somewhere here you can find uh, Macedonia with, uh, with this capital, um, Skopje. So you still have in the urban fabric of the city, you have still these different levels of, um, of uh, Ottoman Empire. Uh, there's still old bazaars, I think same size as you can find in, uh, um, in Sarajevo, still exists. Then you had this, uh, during the kingdom of Serbia, Croatia and Slovenia, you had uh, influences of uh, Vienna, uh, kind of Ring, Ringstraße, Types and buildings in uh, in the city, and and after the Second World War um, during Yugoslavia, you had this um, all these influences from uh, Ziam, or, or as we heard before from from Le Corbusier, a plan like this, uh, the housing here, working there, um, this this ideas. Everything changed in in this year '63. There was a huge earthquake in Skopje. So about 1,000 people died, 80% um, of the city was destroyed. I think only, mainly the, the old bazaar uh, rest there, and uh, 140 people were homeless. So this was the year everything changed for, for the city. You see here some postcards from this time. Uh, the old railway station on the, on the left, and. Um, and the uh, railway in how it looks st still today as a, as a monument of this earthquake. So the faith of, um, of Skopje was very, um, got a huge uh, response from, from the whole world. So Yugoslavia was at this time, it was a, a block-free country. It was not in the Eastern Bloc, not, not in the Western. And that's why, and it's make it its own way. And that's why um, the, um, it got help from, from the whole world. So from, it was a, a real, uh, a very big um, uh, propaganda project for a, from the United Nations to rebuild Skopje. And it was the first time after the Second World War when a Russian, a Soviet and a US uh, army met here and to rebuild the, the city um, of, of Skopje. 
Um, Copy got from several countries. They got some uh, some help, um, some houses, grants, and uh, financial help. And two years after the, the earthquake, the, the government decided to make um, a competition, urban competition, uh, for rebuilding um, Skopje. This uh, urban competition, there were eight. Uh, it was an international competition. Eight offices from uh, from the whole world were invited. For example, Van den Broek Bakema from Holland, Edward Ravnikar from Yugoslavia, and Kenzo Tange from uh, Japan. And there were two uh, offices who won the vote, uh, competition. One was Kenzo Tange's team, and the other one was the um, town planning team of Zagreb. Both won this competition for the for the master plan. Finally, it was. Kenzo Tange's team was chosen for, um, for the master ban uh, of Skopje because of the bigger uh, reputation and bigger propaganda effect of Yugoslavia for, for Yugoslavia and uh, for, for the United Nation and Japan as well. So here you, you see the, the team, um, Kenzo Tange. Um, Kenzo Tange was... Um, some years before, in '56, he was in Dubrovnik, and he was very impressed. It was a CM10 congress there, where he met uh, Alison and Peter Smithson as well, and um, he was very impressed by this urban form of Dubrovnik with the um, with the wall around this uh, city center. And um, perhaps you know this uh, this project he made in '60 for the Bay of, of Tokyo, this huge metropolis um, project, this huge, huge plan. And finally, he could realize his ideas. This in Tokyo, it wasn't realized, but finally he could realize his idea in, in Skopje. And it was, um, for him, it was good that this was a socialist country. <clears throat> Uh, from top to down um, plan. Um, so here you can see uh, some um, a part of this uh, of this master plan of the result result of the competition. Yellow the yellow project. It's a so-called um, uh, so, sorry, it doesn't work very well. It's a so-called uh, city gate for, with uh, housing estates. So similar to the to the sorry not the city gate city wall, similar to the city wall in in Dubrovnik, but here with a housing estate. The uh, orange red one it's the um, infrastructure projects. Here on the very um, right side you can see the railway station here, and on different ways uh, level levels. Uh, street levels, you have pedestrian and uh, uh, car circulation directly to the city center. Then blue, you have some uh, cultural um, projects here. Uh, pink is the university, and here also blue is on uh, museums. This is, this is the plan, and green, the old, the old existing bazaar of uh, Skopje. So this was uh, the master plan of it, and uh, here the, uh, the model of the competition. In front, here below, you see the, the railway station, the circulation on different levels directly to the city center uh, for pedestrians and cars, and on both sides of this um, circulation, you have um, some uh, office buildings, the Bank of Macedonia today, uh, this this was um, was the competition model and the idea of uh, Kenzo Tange's team. Uh, how it looks today is this: uh, there were only some parts realized from this. For example, this sh city shopping center. Uh, you can on different levels you have this uh, this connection um, street levels to the, the what was the aim to connect to the, the railway station and the uh, um, city wall with these housing units. A part of this uh, master plan was also uh, were several books uh, who described the development of the city. There are about 25 books 
of it and the aim of this book or the master plan also was to have a manual for in other cases like this where you have to uh, rebuild very fast um, an existing city or to, to plan a new city. It's not, it was not only for Skopje but also for the aim to use it for other places. <clears throat> Here you see some uh, parts of this um, books uh, from uh, urban plan to uh, even you have some floor plans for the, for the housing projects. <clears throat> now I will show you some uh, pictures how it looks um, today, how, what was realized of this um, plan, of this master plan. First I start in the suburbs of, um, of Skopje. You see here very uh, small houses. So a lot of these houses, they, as I told you, there were 140,000 um, homeless people after the earthquake. And one of the gifts from uh, a present from other countries, uh, I think from Scandinavia and Finland mainly, uh, were these uh, emergency houses, these shelters for the, for the homeless. So you can still find these um, homeless, um, or these this buildings for the homeless um, in, the, in the city. Um, but now the, the main project, uh, I will show you a selection of, of it. Um, one is this um, dormitory, student dormitory, from Georg Konstantinovsky. So, uh, Konstantinovsky got a grant as a gift after this earthquake um, to study in the US. <coughs> So he studied there, so it's a um, little bit different what we heard before. Uh, um, he wasn't in Moscow, so he studied in, in the US. And there he, he met um, Ayn Pei, he worked with Ayn Pei and Paul Rudolf. And therefore he got some these influences from, uh, also from this brutalist architecture and he brought this to, to Skopje. Um, this is the, the condition now, uh, today, so two years ago I, I've been there in, in Skopje um, and I think it's a little bit like this IDS Park Lane uh, project from Alison Peter Smithson with this connection on dif different levels, places, the circulation where, where you, uh, this is the sky bridge as we saw before. The sky bridge connected these different um, uh, dormitories and the, different, the, the levels, the circulation levels there are also uh, meeting points. So the, the roofs you see here, they, they weren't co covered before. They, uh, so in, in a bad condition, that's why they, they covered now. And, and the all, on the level where the, the bridge is um, connected to the houses, you have some meeting places, some places for the students to, to work and, and to learn. <laughs> This is a, not a covered terrace, uh, so it was. Um, I've, I, I suppose it was quite nice when it was a good, in good condition with um, with garden and even some uh, some pools for for water because it's quite warm there in uh, in summer. <clears throat> some interior view. And uh, the living units for two students, they share uh, one small room. And the floor plan is interesting. I sent it once to, to uh, Mr. Konstantinovsky because it's a little bit similar to uh, projects uh, Atelier 5 in Switzerland made for, um, for, a ho for a hospital. Also for two people and uh, the idea to make some private space even if they share the, the same room. <clears throat> Another project is also uh, the result of a competition, is the Serial and Method University. Um, it's, uh, the university is directly connected to the old bazaar you see on the top left. Um, and you have um, in the center of, the, of this, of this uh, campus, you have this kind of, of Agora public, public space. Uh, and the different faculties are connected to this uh, public space. So this is this, uh, this Agora here, the, um, one of the entry halls of the faculty. And when you go deeper and deeper in, in these houses, the, you have these narrow, small uh, corridors and small places where, where you can can work and um, and meet. So it's a 
for the architect, it was um, the old bazaar. It was a reference to to rebuild it or to build it here in this uh, in this uh, university. Um, another project is uh, only two photos of it. It's a real, also a brutalist building, uh, like a, it's a hydrometeorological institute um, with this strong um, construction. They lift up the, some of the, of, the, of the office rooms here, but uh, yeah, quite a um, so brutalist building and but quite a uh, bad condition at the moment. One of the main uh, uh, projects is, uh, which is realized after the earthquake is this uh, Center for Telecommunication. Um, there are some, several parts, office building and uh, counter um, hall you can find here. Um, there, I think there are influences from, uh, from the so in the in the form or in the design from the um, well not from the content but from the design from the brutalist architecture, but also some uh, organic influences if uh, what you can find in the work on, of other Yugoslavian architects and even traditional um, motifs you can find here in, the, in this this building. But I think it's it's something. Very unique. You can you can't find some somewhere else uh, buildings li like that, and uh, that's why uh, I think uh, Skopje is um, is a really uh, a unique town in uh, in Europe. <clears throat> this is the counter hall. So um, unfortunately, uh, I think two or three years ago, it it burned down. Uh, or there was a fire, it's still, the uh, facade still exists, and I don't know if they will rebuild it. I think it's, they, they won't do it. <clears throat> but my, my favorite project is this, uh, is this uh, cultural center. Um, you see here the, the city center, here the, the, the shopping mall, the, the river Vardar flows through the, through the city, and on the, um, in the middle here, on the left, you have the, here this one. This is the Opera and Ballet House, and this is the Music Academy. So these two buildings are part of a whole uh, culture center here in, in the city. So for me, this is a, um, the, the Opera House is, is more than a building. For me, it's like a, a, a landscape. It's connected the house directly to, to, to the river. And um, you please um, keep this in mind, this photo, because you will see after how it changed uh, very, very strong. <clears throat> this was a, is a model we found uh, in, the, in the cellar of, this, um, of the opera house. You can see here the, the opera house here and the music academy here on this side. The two other buildings, they are not, not realized. <clears throat> How it looks from, from outside. So it's like, um, for me, it's, it's, it's a little bit similar to, to this opera house of uh, Snoheta in, in Oslo. It's, it's more, a, more a landscape than a, than a building. Or perhaps you know this, this painting from, from uh, Kasper David Friedrich, this uh, Eismeer, this shells which forms a, a, a space. Inside you have these concrete flap, the slabs, uh, they make this, this space and a very, very nice atmosphere with, with the light. It's, but still, uh, in, the condition inside is it's still good and it's in use, use and the stage of this um, opera and ballet house. <clears throat> And finally, uh, the last project I will show you is this, um, the only one which uh, Ken Sotanga realized. It's the um, railway station. So it was the beginning, beginning of this city gate connected to the, to the city center. Uh, and you already see on this picture how, how it looks. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's too big for the importance of the, of the railway in, in Macedonia. Um, this, 
the whole structure is, as you saw in the, in the model, um, it's uh, lift up about 10 meters above uh, street level. Uh, you have the platforms on the upper level and on the street level you have the station for the, for the buses. Uh, you see, see, see again the, the, it's the idea of the railway station here with this, um, this uh, elevated, ele uh, sorry, this elevated level of the um, of the pedestrian and platform for the for the railway. <clears throat> yeah, so some parts are still in use, but I think there are about five trains a day here at the station. <clears throat> and it's a it's a funny picture because uh, so this bus station and you see this London buses. So these buses were also a gift after the earthquake from uh, from London. <clears throat> And between these different levels, street level and uh, the platform, uh, you have some facilities, this counters to buy, uh, buy a ticket. So what, what rem uh, remains from this plan from, uh, from Kenzo Tange? You see here, the, this was the competition or the master plan, with yellow, the, this so-called city wall. And so part of, the, of this city wall are, are realized here. And here, red, um, the, the whole infrastructure project. You can see the, um, the railway station, the shopping center, some, the, the cultural house here, the university here. So this is the, the, the master plan and realized is also here the university, the railway station, uh, only one skyscraper of this uh, city gate and the shopping center, the cultural center here, university, and some several, um, several museums, uh, faculties here, and two very, very uh, beautiful museums, um, histori historical museum and the Museum of Contemporary Art. These are uh, realized and here part of the, um, of the telecom center in the, in the city center. So very, Still, still a lot, but uh, comparing to the to the master plan, a few buildings are, are realized. <clears throat> so this was a, uh, to Utopia, to uh, the aim to have um, a modern, open city. And now I will show you uh, what what happened in the in the last several years. So the evil came with very gentle with this um, with the statues, and now you can find in the whole city you can find hundreds of the, of these statues. Um, I will. Uh, this is this is a plan um, with the new project. So red are, are the new projects here again. The, um, the cultural center with the opera house, the shopping center here, and here the telecommunication center with the post office. And red, these are all new buildings. They are uh, at the moment uh, most of them are realized. And what this means, this red line, I, I will show you on, on this next picture. So you have, um, you see here on the on the right side, you see the existing building from the um, 50s or 60s, I don't know, and now the new facade in front of this existing building. So when you go when you go back, so the, the aim of this program, it's a so-called Skopje 2014, is to to make a new new history of the town. So perhaps you know, um, so Macedonia has a very conservative uh, government, and they still have this um, dispute with uh, Greece about their name. Uh, this this conflict with Greece, and they also have a conflict uh, in the in the country between the different ethnic groups. There were some riots years ago. And the aim of this uh, conservative uh, government is to to make a new a new history of uh, of the of the country. Of course, a history only for one kind of um, of people. Uh, and the architecture, what they uh, what's the reference is this neoclassicistic architecture. Um, this is the music academy. So a new building. In front, I don't know, one meter in front of uh, of this music academy, so that the connected connection to the River Vardar is uh, is cut. On the left, you have the opera house, and in front of the opera house, you have now this uh, this new buildings. So um, 
So this, this landscape from, from, uh, from the river Vardar what was very nice to the opera house, so it's completely uh, destroyed. Here is see some, several statues in the city. They even have um, Arc de Triomphe there. Yeah, and this here you see how it, how this uh, city planning works now. So it's it's so there's no plan really. Of, of course, the government has some several ideas, but you have here uh, on the left side you have a new beach for uh, recreation, and on the right side, uh, right side you have a, a, new, a new new museum, a Holocaust museum. So red, right the dead bodies, left the naked bodies. So it's, it's really stupid what, what they plan here. <clears throat> and uh, it's, for, me, for me, it's a kind of, of uh, semantic uh, nightmare. It's kind of, uh, of, of Disney world. <laughs> and um, to show you what happened in the suburb, so even the, it's, it's another, another uh, story, but uh, even this um, Shelters, they, they will disappear because of the economical uh, pressure. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, um, really bad what, what happened in Skopje with this project, Skopje 2014. This uh, culture center it still exists, but the connection to the to the whole city, to the river, it's, it's, it's destroyed. This is the shopping center. They, they have the plans to, to cover the whole shopping center with this uh, neoclassicistic facade. The, as I told you, the telecommunication center, the post office is partly destroyed because um, of a fire and I think they won't rebuild it. Uh, of course, the headquarter of Communist Party is destroyed, and so the, I think what what uh, what will be from this idea of Kenzo Tang, this this open town for this international town, is a kind of nationalism you can find in in the architecture in the in the urban planning or uh, idea for a computer game. For example, I found in the internet, it's, it's kind of, it's for me it's similar to the, urban, uh, to the city wall we could find in the, in the plan of, uh, of Kenzo Tange. <clears throat> that's, that's the situation now in, um, in Skopje. Uh, two years ago, a friend of mine, he found in the city archive um, a treasure. He found the paper, the original papers of the, um, of the competition uh, from Kenzo Tange, or, and um, for example, from Brug Bakema, these original plans. And these plans, they were a source for the last uh, architecture biennale in Venice, where they made an exhibition about um, the situation in Skopje, about the urban plan, the master plan of, of Kenzo Tong and his, his team. So uh, also they found all these this books with the, for the master plan and finally this it still exists part of the competition model what was made in Japan for, um, for Skopje for, for the competition. So I hope um, this this thing, what they found, it helps to um, to realize what importance uh, Skopje is the, for the for, for me. It's on the same level as a urban planning as uh, Chandigarh or Brasilia, the idea, and it's completely extraordinary in uh, in uh, in Europe. So I'm I'm not sure. I don't believe, but I hope that the government will uh, with this treasure will realize what they destroy. Um, at the moment. Thank you very much for your attention. So if you want to see uh, several photos uh, on, this, on my webpage, you can find uh, some more. Thank you, Peter, for this great uh, lecture. Uh, I met this uh, uh, city plan two years ago in the Venice Biennale. Uh, uh, 
in uh, it, it was part of uh, an exhibition called uh, Lifting the Curtain. I'm very happy now that you went into the details. Um, is there any question to Peter? Of course. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a general question because I have a I haven't seen this uh, urban plan. I knew that there was Kenzo Tanga in Skopje, but I haven't seen so many details, so it's uh, new to me. But I have a feeling of a déjà vu that we talk about architectural avant-garde uh, from the 60s uh, that is being uh, vandalized now. And I think it happens everywhere where the architectural avant-garde is. So uh, my question is, do you know any place w which has metabolism uh, I don't know, 60s architecture, uh, big urban plans that were that vanguardist, uh, that actually are not vandalized and that are taken care of in the right way? Because I cannot think of any place like that. Yeah, so I agree with you. So it's, um, I think it's nearly everywhere where this, um, this kind of architecture from socialist time is uh, uh, abandoned uh, or will destroy because it's a it's our pleasure from from a, from a time where the where it's a communist time, and the people think that this this time or this system the political system was bad. That's why the architecture is bad. So we don't have to care, take care about this architecture. So it's a symbol for for this for this time. But um, I think in Yugoslavia, Macedonia is a, is, a, is a, um, something different. Um, what I saw in um, <clears throat> for example in uh, Zagreb, and I talked to people people there and architects, or also a little bit in, um, in Belgrade, with Novi Be Belgrade and Zagreb in Novi Zagreb. So they, they still uh, like to live in this, uh, these buildings from the time, and they are proud about the buildings. I think in Yugoslavia it's, it's a little bit different, but the other countries, yes, I, I, I agree, it's the same situation. It's, it's a pity. Or, or I was yesterday, sorry, I was yesterday in um, Eisenhüttenstadt um, and I was a little bit surprised that they renovate the whole uh, city of this socialist realism. So, and um, so the atmosphere is, is quite, for me, it's quite, quite good. Also, they, they also lost a lot of, of people, I think, their inhabitants. I think this renovation is also very much connected to the conservative uh, retrospective movement and especially in uh, regimes that are closely to conservative because if I could compare the situation in the former Baltic republics like Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, uh, they had the myth local mythology with modernist, this post-war modernism that uh, was proud, they were proud being the inner abroad or inner west countries within the USSR. So, uh, it, and it was the more local modernism movement. So I think uh, they are very nicely adapted to uh, nowadays uses and uh, uh, they are not uh, vandalized <laughs> as you can see, but uh, uh, Sometimes it's very simply manip manipulated because uh, this modernist architecture ages not beautifully. If you uh, compare it to the Baroque buildings and they are still beautiful in ruins or in uh, not very well done. And people just like it because these are beautiful. Yeah, these are beautiful and uh, concrete, brutalist concrete is not beautiful. If it's not it's very well taken care. Um, you, you told us uh, that this, uh, some of these Kenzo Tange uh, brutalist uh, student home buildings were unique in Skopje, but I, I, I remember this uh, have, having that seen in Belgrade and Ljubljana, and could you embed this style, I mean, into, or, or could you describe a, a kind of uh, Yugoslavian uh, uh, architectural style in the 60s and, and uh, 70s? Because I, it seems to me that there is a typical uh, 
uh, yeah, a typical kind of, 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 of building in the center of these cities, even Belgrade, if you look uh, to these skyscrapers of this time and of the, the, these, these uh, big buildings there and even until into today in Ljubljana, even in the center, there's some typical Yugoslavian uh, uh, concrete uh, buildings of this naked uh, kind of brutality or something maybe, and it looks the same. <laughs> Um, uh, similar buildings in, in um, as you mentioned, Belgrade, for example, the Scanex Tower, uh, it's, it's or, or uh, others, uh, they are quite um, brutalist buildings. But um, in other parts, for example, was, as I mentioned, Novi Beograd, it's, it's completely different in the, in the urban planning and in the buildings you can find there. There are some uh, special buildings, perhaps they are, are similar to this one. But um, and I, I think Ljubljana is, um, is also it's more similar than to Belgrade or to, to Zagreb. Uh, for me, Skopje is, uh, is very um, unique. The, and and uh, the, what's, what's the difference is, in, the, in other parts of Yugoslavia, you have um, more the influence of, uh, of the ideas of Le Corbusier. And here in, um, in Skopje, it was uh, this influence of, uh, of brutalism. And I suppose uh, Konstantinovsky, who built uh, the dormitory, was Im very important because he brought from the US, he brought these ideas from uh, Paul Rudolph because he worked together with him to, uh, to, to the city. So for me, it's a little bit, a little bit different. but. Um, of course, uh, I saw some uh, small villages in Serbia, for example, you have uh, um, some same ideas. And perhaps you know um, Juraj Neidhardt, he's an architect from um, Sarajevo, he worked in the studio of Le Corbusier. He brought his ideas to, um, to Sarajevo, but he made um, a very interesting book, book about um, the story of or the architecture of Bosnia and the way from the past to the future. And there you can see the, the influences of the traditional forms in the, in the new architecture. So there, there are different influences. In some parts you see it more and some parts um, less, yes. But, but for me it's a little bit... Um, Skopje, I think it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a mixture of different influence, influences. So this metapolist architecture you can't find uh, somewhere else in, um, in Yugoslavia, I, I suppose. Okay. So they didn't, didn't want to make a national Yugoslavian statement at the time. Uh, they, they, they had uh, much more liberty uh, for the... For the they gave, um, for ideas uh, in the, in the, for the in, in these local uh, parts of Yugoslavia, you, you would say this. Exactly. There, there is no opposition to to Moscow or to. I mean, I mean, they could say we build, we we are Yugoslavia. We we want to to make an architectural statement uh, and uh, to show our, our unity, our unique. Uh, Yugoslavian way or in, in this way? Yugoslavia was blo block free country, so it was not in yes. the Eastern Eastern Bloc, not in, in the Western Bloc. And that's why it got so much s s support after the earthquake, uh, Skopje. And um, they, they followed their own way. And um, the architecture of this, this um, uh, Le Corbusier was quite a big influence because this was the, the idea of. Um, of a developed country, so this, this was, well, I think, it was a main influence in the in most part of Yugoslavia. But in Skopje, I think it's um, it's something dif different because there were other influence from from the U.S. from uh, from the brutalist architecture, but also from the traditional architecture. So it was not not only this uh, um, international or influence by Le Corbusier; it was also a kind. Uh, other, other influences and, and from the traditional architecture you can find some um, some parts in this for example in the telecommunication center here I understand you I understand your emotions but um, on the other hand I not really like the way that you're blaming the people that they don't like our architecture because I think it's easy to make good pictures about these buildings, but perhaps it's not so easy to live in these buildings. 
Have you some information? And you mentioned the railway station that is not not really function. Have you some information about the dormitory or the dwellings? How the people they live, how they can use it, or, or mm -hmm. so. You know, they, they still use it because they don't have something something else. But for example, the, um, the university it's not um, it's not renovated, and I think it's a it's a strategy we uh, we saw in, in other countries in Eastern Europe that you have this this building from from the, from this time from the 60s 70s. They they do nothing and but they build an extension of this university, a new building. So I don't understand why they, they don't renovate the existing one and they make a new extension uh, completely new. And I think it will happen the same. After uh, 20 years, this, this extension will be, the, will be in a bad condition as, as well. Um, <coughs> there, there were some, uh, someone said before, it's, uh, yeah, the, the people, they, they like this, they prefer this because it's, it's Yeah, you said because it, it, this is nice. Yes, I think most of people they they like this, but there were also some some pro uh, protests in the city against uh, the. What do you see here? Um, yeah, the this here, the shopping center. Uh, the, uh, what the government want to destroy? Um, yeah, it's a yeah, part of it. Um, So there were some protests in the city to, to destroy it. But I think, I, and it, it was the first time when the protests, not only in this area, against this uh, renovation, so-called renovation of the shopping center, but also against this urban projects copied 2014. It was the first time when there were projects from the Albanian minority and the uh, Macedonian minority to, together against this, uh, this project. Uh, uh, project. Uh, one short comment you asked. Uh, so uh, I think the, the university in Jör, which it's something ar architecture like this, it's a positive uh, example to the to the new life of these buildings because uh, it is well integrated in the in the city. It was uh, it was the development in the in the in the few years ago. This was. Uh, according of the original development plan, and, uh, and these are very well functioning buildings too. The the college, the the, the, the uh, dormitories and uh, and the academic buildings too, and uh, yes, it was thermoisolated, so it looks like today uh, not 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 as ten uh, years ago, but the originally uh, idea, it's still functioning today. A, a monumental protection? No, Not. no, no. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I have a question. Do I have any? Uh, do I have any ideas? How did they build the house, uh, the, the opera house? Like, how can you build uh, a house with no orthogonal surfaces, like in 1979? Um, I don't know how you build it. I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. So it's concrete building, and uh, but I, I never saw some uh, some construction plans. Uh, I, I don't know. But it was still it was also a uh, competition. So I think the jury uh, they they choose uh, a great project. Uh, you. In your presentation, you referred to the current state of the buildings as dystopia. Uh, while the title of this uh, uh, event is uh, Utopias and Realities, uh, would you say that uh, these, uh, the current state of these buildings is really a dystopia? Or is it more like reality, where modernist architects has to face the reality where their buildings are not really working out? Or is it the people who created a dystopia out of a possible utopia? Well, the fact is that um, during this master plan, um, it took quite a long time when they uh, start to, to build the project. And at the same time, the city developed itself. The people built their houses, and uh, so that's the reality. For me, the dystopia is um, is what we see now. 
because it's the it's a city which creates a history only for one ethnic group in a, in the in the in the country. So that's why for me it's a, it's a dystopia. So it's it's a closed city for everyone else. So when you when you are there, um, you have here the Ottoman bazaar. It's, it's something else. It's not connected to the to the cities to the city. Not not connected to the history. What what it's planned in a, this copy 2014. And it's really a, an artificial um, history of of the of the country. That's why for me it's a and a selected history. That's why it's a dystopia only because it's only for one group of of uh, of ethnic. So the, the dystopia is referring to the contemporary historical architect, not to the current state of the uh, modernist architecture? Yeah, the current state, it's, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's in a bad state, but that's, that's, that's a reality. But it's, it's not this, it's the dystopia, yes. 